here. So this provides a precise sense in which singularity is resolved. In classical general relativity, there are quantities such as the density and the curvature square and so on. These quantities become unbounded at the Big Bang, whereas in quantum gravity, these quantities have a quantum geometry induced absolute upper bound on the physical states. Beautiful example of ADS CFT, um, in which there is incredible mathematical power can be brought to bear. One dimension of space and all the dynamics of five dimensional space time emerges dynamically. You have a theory of gravity which is formulated in terms of gauge theories, which in which the metric is fixed. There is no dynamical gravity. So we've learned that you can, gravity can be an emergent phenomena from ordinary non-gravitational physics if you grow space-time as well. And that the diffeomorphism invariance of space-time that emerges is no surprise because you never had space-time to begin with. Therefore, its coordinates are arbitrary and physics should be independent under arbitrary relabeling of those coordinates. Point. The standpoint is that what we want is to have an action principle which you could explain almost to a prehistorical man. You see, if you try to explain to a prehistorical man what is the Einstein gravity action, you will have some trouble because you have to explain what is scalar curvature. And what I want to convince you about is that there is an action principle which is much simpler, which is just a counting function. But, I mean, it has a, a completely different aspect in the sense that instead of being an action principle that brings on data which is local and which is written as a field in a local manner as usual, this action principle will bring on something which is spectral. In short, in this meeting, we have been discussing challenges. That tends to obscure it. That's only natural. This is the way science is done. Uh, but it does tend to obscure the fact that we have this challenge because it rests on a very firm foundation of observational evidence, to say nothing of centuries of fundamental, well-tested physics and principles behind it. What I want to sort of convince you is that a better way to look at gravity is like this. You start from space-time thermodynamics as the primary objective, and then you think of gravity as an emergent phenomenon. In this approach, gravity sort of arises as the thermodynamic limit of a statistical mechanics, underlying statistical mechanics, of what I would loosely call the atoms of space-time. So the question is, what is this all about? What is an emergent phenomenon? we get to linking some of the most important pillars in modern physics, quantum mechanics and general relativity, which usually don't talk to each other, and yet at some level both come into play in trying to explain the nature of dark energy. Uh, okay, so the CMB lensing distorts the temperature and the polarization spectrum. It converts E to B and so forth. So if you actually look on that curve, on the, the temperature temperature curve on the top, you can see the effect of lensing on it. It doesn't look very strong, but we're getting such strong measurements, we actually have four and five sigma detection of lensing on the CMB spectrum. From Planck, we're expecting to improve that significantly. And dark matter seems to be needed on all scales, <coughs> which is why I personally think that Mond and these other attempts to modify Einstein or Newton gravity uh, seems rather uh, unnatural and, and uh, unlikely. The remarkable and perhaps troubling aspect of this diagram is the fact that 95% of the universe is dark, 
We have no idea of its nature, dark matter and dark energy. But if we combine with the baryon acoustic oscillations and the supernova data that were discussed by Adam Reese today, then we get a fairly good constraint on both the curvature of the universe, allowed to be free, and the equation of state for the dark energy. And um, all the talks up to now have been very positive. The status of the data, the status of the observations. Um, I'm not quite so positive in uh, the status of the model building and uh, our understanding of uh, the origin of dark energy. Gravitational lensing is certainly an option to see the invisible universe simply because it can uh, really see the deflection of light produced by any uh, dark matter concentration. The best now is to look to the past history. And for doing so, we don't have to go too much on philosophical grounds, but just to think that there is a link between uh, redshifted distant galaxies with nearby galaxies. In my opinion, the problem is the, uh, although you can get extremely strong constraints to exclude models, once you observe something, it's difficult to prove that it's really dark matter and WIMP annihilation. Within the framework of supersymmetry, the notion of space-time is extended. Uh, space-time is extended to superspace, and in the superspace, we find the ordinary coordinates of space-time. So my talk is about the need, and I try to convince you that there is such a need for new observable to understand it better the nature of the energy. As, as I said, I will, in my talk, I will rely only on uh, extremely well understood properties of large distance black holes and uh, generic field theoretic consistency arguments, okay, such as unitarity, absence of ghosts, and uh, etc. etc. Now, if we take the, the, the dark energy to be a cosmological constant, we know that it will dominate in the future, making our universe uh, the sitter more and more the sitter like I will show you the contribution of deep redshift surveys on two main areas, uh, baryon acoustic oscillations, but I will mostly focus on the growth rate, which we have demonstrated recently can be derived uh, from uh, deep redshift surveys. Planck as a third generation CMB experiment is aiming at uh, just to, in rough numbers, at gaining a factor 2.5 angular resolution with comparison to the W map and uh, an order of magnitude in instantaneous sensitivity, and you'll see the final sensitivity. Now, I've told only now for spiral galaxies what can we uh, say about ellipticals or spheroidal galaxies. This is, this is a more complex problem because uh, you have no uh, good tracers like the uh, neutral gas. So. Uh, the gravitational redshift, something which is even more basic than general relativity. It does not depend on the Einstein field equations, but holds for uh, any metric theory.